Working by myself in an HR department, I learned the true meaning of burning the candle at both ends. I mean, I came in early. I left late. <laughs> I worked in on my lunch break. I worked in the evenings. I worked on vacation and it was horrible. I was doing all that so that I can get caught up in HR. I thought that one day I would be able to button up everything. But because I came into the HR industry directly out of college, I had to realize that the work is really never done. As an HR professional, you have to work consistently and the work is never really completed. You just get to the point where you understand where you are and where you need to pick up the next time you come into the office. I understand all this now. It makes perfect sense, but it took me a good three to four years to realize that the work was never done. I had to figure out how would I work through that. To be honest, I was aiming for all the right things because I wanted to get things done and I wanted to be great in my job, but my focus was wrong. I was thinking that I had to do all these things and the work was never done because I was incompetent or I was not capable of doing the work. But I had to realize, no, that's not it. It's really about the way that I work and my mindset around getting all the things done. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The deal break for me or the thing that shifted the way that I thought about things was really when I started getting into a serious relationship with my now husband. Then we got married and we started having kids and I realized, Brittany, the work, the work that you're doing and the way that you're doing it is not sustainable. You've got to find a better way to do this. I've shared on this channel before, I realized that no one could want this more than me. And I knew that if I was not working sustainably or if I wasn't satisfied the way that I was working, then no one would be there to pull my coattails or tell me that I should do something different. So I had to dig deep and find out resources and trainings and seminars and conferences to go to to learn different things. So I'm going to summarize some of the things that I've learned that have helped me to not just maintain my career and not just survive in my HR role, but to truly, truly thrive. The first thing you have to do is learn how to prioritize effectively and realize that not everything is priority. Just because someone comes to your office and tells you that they have a need or just because your supervisor asks you a question doesn't mean that everything's at the top of your list. The only way you're going to know if things are a priority or not is if you have a plan. I've talked about this in prior videos too. The best way to turn down an assignment or the best way to kick a can down the road or to postpone an assignment is to have a plan that you're already working from. It's one thing to say no or not yet and you just don't want to do it. That's completely different than saying no or not yet because you're in the middle of something else. On this channel, I talk a lot about being intentional because you have to be intentional with how you spend your time, what you're doing in your office and all the things that go along with you being an effective HR professional. Your ability to prioritize is essential to you growing in your HR career. Again, you got to get out of the day to day paper pushing and the day to day things is going to keep the department afloat. You've got to find ways to add value to your organization and ultimately to your department first. So your ability to prioritize is going to be key. A tool I created over 10 years ago that helped me to scale and grow my career that I'm now making accessible to you and affordable for you is the Thriving in HR Planner. It's a 12 month planner that you're going to be able to walk through every Every single day every single week every single month and ultimately a 12 month span so that you understand not just what you need to work on now but what are the things that come up every quarter what are the things that come up every month if I ask you today what's your next priority for the next month can you tell that to me or we have to kind of rack your brain and just give me an educated guess so in HR if you want to be effective and you want to know that you're doing the right things at the right times you have to have a system in place and you have a processes around the way you show up and work the second piece that's non-negotiable when it comes to balancing everything as an HR professional is leveraging technology. So you don't have to do things manually all the time. You don't have to do things by hand and just rely on sticky notes and sentinel pads and all these things. For example, are you using an applicant tracking system? Applicant tracking systems can really make your recruiting life so much easier, especially the ones that have built in text messaging built in statuses that you can apply to different people in different parts of the process. Again, once you can figure out what tools and technology you can use to optimize things that you're doing, that's really the name of the game. Even thinking about the way you use your calendar, are you utilizing it to its fullest capacity or are you only using your calendar that's tied to your email for email? If Are you blocking out your time, your focus times, your meeting times? Are you preparing in time for your meetings to go into those meetings and be the most effective you as well? There are so many tools that I use that make my life so much easier. If you're curious about any of them, drop a comment down below or a question if you're interested in me doing a series about some of my favorite tech tools for HR. But again, you have to find ways to leverage technology that works for you. 
it doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't even have to be expansive but the goal is to know what it is you're trying to accomplish and then finding tools to support you in doing that the third key piece to make sure you can balance everything that you need as an hr professional is to delegate effectively and when i say delegate oftentimes we think about just delegating to a member of our team or delegating down and that's not what i'm talking about especially because i'm talking to you as an hr department of one so you're working in a role by yourself in hr and you might not have someone who knows exactly what you do day to day your supervisor doesn't know what you do either and so when it comes to delegating there's a few different ways you want to think about this consider the questions that you get often you're frequently asked questions you may even have a work document or an excel spreadsheet with all of your answers because you know you're going to get this question asked at least once a month if you have those kind of questions that come up often Find ways to empower your employees to go and seek out the information, whether it's a question about a benefits enrollment or a question about a handbook policy or whatever it is. Using tools like an intranet, whether it's hosted on WordPress or in Microsoft SharePoint, but just finding different ways to prepare some type of virtual bulletin board or some type of access point for your employees to go to to gain access to information where they should be able to get it at their fingertips. Also, when delegating, you need to know how to manage up. So there's a skill to that. And that's one of the things I work with with my coaching clients. When it comes to managing up, that means learning more about your supervisor. So not just how can you provide value to the organization and also to yourself, but how can you provide value to your supervisor? How can you show yourself to be a value add, to be a true support system for your supervisor? No matter how long you've worked together, cultivating this relationship will be important to make sure that you not only secure your space in the organization, but also show your to be truly committed to the organization to the role and to the growth of your organization you want to make sure you have an open line of communication with your supervisor so that when it comes to requests for assignments and things of that nature you can make sure you are delegating it appropriately also as you're working interdepartmentally so you're working across departments you want to make sure you don't take on unnecessary assignments so you understand what that means for you but you want to make sure that as you work with people as you work with other departments again as you're working alone in hr you want to make sure you are effectively delegating and breaking up and dividing up assignments in a way where you're not going to be overloaded in a way that's going to harm your effectiveness in your role the fourth thing you want to do is maintain your boundaries this is kind of akin to prioritizing effectively but the idea here is to understand your limits so again it's easier to turn down an assignment or to postpone an assignment if you have your own plan in place so knowing your boundaries is going to help you to be more effective in your role to help you to balance things more appropriately also, as you make your plan visible, you can have others around you to understand where you're coming from, what you're working through, how they can even support you in the process. The biggest piece that has helped me to grow my career and balance everything is continuous learning. So these things you don't learn by osmosis. These things don't just come to you just as a, as a bright idea. The things that I'm learning, the things that I've learned, the things you're learning, you have to read a book. You have to talk to people. You have to be coached and mentored and, and sit under someone that's going to help you to gain and get to the heights where you've seen someone else get. Investing not only the time, but also the money into things that are important to you is super important because you want to make sure you're taking it as seriously as you need to. Bouncing everything that you do in HR really is a mindset shift and I have an entire playlist about the mindsets that you need to have as an HR leader so check that out next